welcome to Turn 7. I'm Wahoo Warrior. I'm here today to talk about artillery and anti-tank guns and uh, their balance in the current game system. Uh, when I first started playing bolt action, I read all the FAQs and errata and whatnot. There weren't that many. For a first edition game, you know, I have to say it's pretty pretty well done. Uh, but it, uh, the game was made, you know, for casual play. And as people started to play a little bit more, some of the little glitches were seen in the Warlord and addressed those. So uh, one of the things that uh, when I first started playing is I had assumed with the FAQ to uh, artillery, HE in particular, uh, that it only did one hit to a tank. That was a big question, you know, does it do multiple hits to a tank? Do you resolve each of those independently? They FAQ'd that, it's one hit. They did not address the pin markers, uh, the multiple pins that HE does. Uh, they also addressed flamethrowers. Uh, flamethrowers don't do D3 plus one pins to tanks, they only do one pin. So I had made the conclusion based off those FAQs that a tank would only take, an armored vehicle would only take one pin from a shot. As I played a little bit more and come to understand that that's not the minority, everybody else plays it uh, multiple pins. And a tactic for knocking big tanks out of a game is hitting them with medium and heavy artillery until they are pinned out of the game whether destroyed or just completely rendered completely useless so that to me you know I've had a little bit of chat on some of the forums and the bolt action forums with some people and you know I I tend to think that that is a huge problem in the game uh, some third-party stuff uh, boltaction.net tried to increase the d6 for heavy weapons to make uh, expensive tanks a little more viable that's one way to look at it, but nobody's addressed reducing the effectiveness of HE versus armor. I think that would make a huge difference in the game, and I'm going to explain that. You know, we got the, here's just some pictures of, of some of the things. This is a light uh, howitzer, so it'd be able to, you know, swing it around and fire pretty, pretty easily. Not made to kill tanks, but it can be put in a pinch. There's a medium howitzer. In a pinch, you know, it's better than your rifle or bayonet. You can fire it at a tank, and I hope you get lucky. This bad boy, that'd be a that'd be a like a heavy for sure. Uh, good luck wielding that onto a moving target, but you know, this crews could possibly do it if they ambushed them. And here's a light anti-tank. Anti-tank guns were made specifically to kill tanks. That's it. Uh, they could fire at HE, but that was not their purpose. Their purpose was to get out there in the field and destroy enemy tanks. There's a six pounder, so that's a medium anti-tank gun. And there's a pack 40 to be a heavy anti tank gun. If you ever seen one of these fire, I encourage you to watch a video. Uh, it is uh, amazing the amount of power that they put out. So, like I said, I'm going to explain what I was thinking here a little bit. Standard scenario you see on a lot of tabletops. Somebody brings a light uh, howitzer. Uh, we'll just play this one without the British special rule that gives them light anti tank. So it's just a light howitzer. And my opponent here, my pretend opponent, uh, is that guy who loves his tank models, and he got a Panzer IV. Uh, it's got a heavy anti-tank gun, and it is a cool model. Who doesn't like uh, Panzer IV and up? Uh, they just start to get costed out of the game once they get a little bigger than this. But here's your standard issue late war German tank, 9-up armor. So we are sitting right around uh, 32 inches away from each other, and... Uh, What's going to end up happening is I've got this howitzer positioned by a wall and this tank is trying to advance, comes in from reserve. No matter who goes first, you know, you could say, if you were an artilleryman manning this howitzer, uh, that would not be something you would want to see coming across the field. In, in bolt action though, you, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, one, that the, the HE as a rule stands for that heavy tank is only going to be... Uh, you know, minor. It's going to be D3 HE with a plus one penetration and only one pin. So here's our, our Valiant Crewman with this light howitzer, standard issue light howitzer. And here's our Panzer IV, hot off the presses. Doesn't even have primer on it. So just order this guy and want to wreak some havoc on my enemy. So I brought it to my local club and here we go. Uh, if the howitzer goes first, it's going to be hitting at long range on a four. That tank's got no cover. Oftentimes, you know, tanks do have a difficult time finding cover, so we're just going to make it easy for the howitzer in this particular situation. So it hit on a four up. Uh, so let's say we roll that four up. Now the next thing we have to do is 
determine whether or not it, it uh, pins the tank because it's a regular and it can't penetrate it. 50% chance it does. Uh, if it does on a 50-50 chance, because they're regular, they have to test, they'll take either one or two pins. A one, two, or three, one pin, four, five, or six, two pins. So we didn't actually hurt this thing, but supposedly the concussion blast caused this crew to, to panic or something. So they fire back. Let's say they go first. They fire back. They need a five to hit this crew behind a wall. If it's behind a hedge or something, it'd be a four up. But even if they hit it, uh, the you know the most that they can do is uh, D3 pins. So the average would be D3 HE. So the average would be two. They would need fives to hurt this thing with plus one penetration and a gun shield. Because the FAQ says HE to the front of a gun shield, you get the gun shield. So, wow, big advantage for the howitzer. You know, uh, if we put two pins on that thing with, with our shot first or even one pin, well, one pin you'd have to check. You could clear it. Two pins, check it and remove it. It's very difficult. So, you know, let's look at this thing if it's a light anti-tank gun. So we're firing it as a light anti-tank gun now. We're still going to need the same to hit for the range, so four up. We hit it, we do one pin because we can actually hurt it with plus three. It's got an eight armor. Uh, I mean a nine armor if we would roll a six we could glance it so we auto pin it since it's a regular and then in order to actually hurt it we need a six up so we do one pin and to get a glance we need a six at long range mm -hmm. you know that howitzer has a chance to cause two pins we can only do one with the anti-tank gun which is made to kill tanks so let's jump up to a medium anti-tank gun uh, in a medium howitzer demonstration. So, uh, we actually, if we were at 32, you, you need a four up as well. Another inch or so closer would be a three up. So, 50 50 chance, maybe a little bit. We're going to fire this thing with anti tank round. Uh, we do hit it, but you know what? We need a five to glance it because our we're, if we're at long range, so uh, it's only plus four. So, well, that's not so great. We only did one pin. Him firing at us is going to be the same as firing at the howitzer. You need five. You can do D3 HE with plus one. So more people than not actually just fire armor piercing at these type of things, and it takes three to four turns to kill them. So let's fire the sucker like a howitzer uh, to see if a howitzer is better at killing tanks than in a tank rounds. So if you're going to be firing this, you know, like same demonstration, at 32 you would need a four. At 30 you would need a three because it has a 60 inch range. Uh, where our medium anti-tank gun had plus five penetration and drops down to plus four at long, our medium howitzer has plus three and it stays consistent. So if you score that hit, you're doing D3 pins. So automatic D3 pins, because your penetration is enough to, to harm it uh, with the plus three, because a six would be a glance. If you happen to get that six, well then you're rolling on the chart. If you don't, you do D3 pins. So you've got two pins average I guess on on that tank so even if it clears one you've got the advantage in the shooting phase for the next turns going on uh, you know there's that that short range needing the three uh, that's even even ups your odds a little bit more but so you know your howitzers right now are getting your better return just scoring hits causes multiple pins and hitting with an anti tank gun does one pin and, and you still need a, a high roll to get a, to kill it so let's pump it up to a heavy anti tank gun i mean those are you know you think you're going no matter what you're going to kill something with a heavy anti tank gun so with a heavy anti tank gun right here we go we're hitting on a three for sure because we have a 72 inch range we've got plus six penetration so now we're in the in our wheelhouse of killing some tanks and so you hitting on a three you cause one pin now you say you know two up kills it but you know what a 50 50 chance on the damage result chart doesn't kill a tank uh one two or three it may crew stun it, it may, but obviously odds are a lot better so let's check a heavy howitzer against this guy heavy howitzer same to hit gonna be needing a three on a three up uh, we're gonna be penetrating with plus four so we can damage it on a five we glance on a six we penetrate it uh, but what's really important is that we're doing d6 pins so we can do uh, you know 
an average of three or four pins on this guy and he is basically out of the game uh, it takes quite a bit to overcome three or four pins uh, definitely two turns and by that time you blast him with another round if you have to but howitzers are made for killing infantry that's what they're for so why does a howitzer get to double dip and be awesome against infantry and pretty damn good against tanks I think we need some balance there and to address that I think the easiest way to do that is just make howitzers hitting tanks normally one hit and one pin doing the one pin uh, will balance those immediate uh, redressing of balance so instead of having those heavy howitzer tanks uh, blasting away on on our tanks and causing uh, d6 pins the Germans would have immediate uh, counter with their heavy and uh, tanks and their heavy anti-tank guns the, the like other players would have to be uh, they have to figure out what they want to take I think you see a lot more anti-tank guns on the field because they're dedicated uh, to kill tanks the you wouldn't I mean howitzers were used as stopgap in most instances to to fill in and try to help with tanks I mean they can they're still a heavy weapon they cause one pin you could penetrate a tank if, if it's a light enough tank if you're hitting it in the side or the rear your tactics would be to obviously try to engage it with something and uh, have it a, and then get a nice side shot on it even you know a lot of Soviet uh, doctrine had assault tanks and they would they would move them in close and fire in the sides and rear you know a lot of people say well you hit by a heavy howitzer and it's going to shake apart the tank and there's studies uh, that you know howitzers have blown apart tank yeah they have but that's not what they're made for look at the size of this heavy howitzer uh, get a tank uh, moving at 35 ish even you know 15 miles an hour it's going to be very difficult for a, even a well-trained tank crew to engage a tank you know do you have artillery barrages those do hit tanks you know if you want and there's a special rule in the barrage that causes uh, multiple pins uh, from the barrage but to actually blast a tank at close range even you know the warlord rules specifically say in the howitzer section it's unlikely you will see these on the battlefield I see them every battle because they're the value is too good to pass up for people and that's where I talk about game balance balancing the game I want to see anti tank guns fighting tanks howitzers oh yeah I need to I would rather shoot infantry but this tank is a threat this armored car is a threat I'm gonna help I'm gonna try to engage it with my 75 millimeter field gun and maybe I'll get lucky and that to me would balance it uh, immensely you would have a lot of more lists out there you would have people taking the you know if they're going to take a howitzer tank they may take an anti-tank gun or vice versa you, know, you may have a, you have your mortar and your but right now it's a no-brainer uh, I can't think of anybody but me that I played recently and I'm going to go to a tournament here in February and I'm going out to Chicago to play at Adepticon so I will see you know, you know a lot more lists uh, I'll play some or just see them and, I, and I'm interested to see how many anti-tank gun crews are fielded out there you know in this in my little scenario I put the, the crew behind a wall but in all reality when people do take anti-tank guns they put them in a pretty well defended spot because they're, they're difficult to move around whether it's a hedgerow or a, a wheat field or whatnot and tanks are moving vehicles are moving uh, I think you can find account after account uh, how difficult it was for tank crews to fight anti-tank guns in that the anti-tank gun would be laying in wait uh, very low to the ground low silhouette uh, camouflage and they'd almost have to take the first shot before they realize that, uh, that an anti-tank gun is nearby uh, I also think you can find several accounts that when heavy or even light armor would get to the divisional field guns it was a massacre route and they would be uh, hooking those things up to anything that could pull them or abandoning them and, and heading out uh, to get out of the way of getting uh, killed so that's just my rambling thought if you want to you know post some comments I'd, be, I'd feel free to do so I'd like to you know de debate it talk about it obviously I don't work for warlord I'm not changing any rules I would like to see since they've already addressed the FAQ on the multiple hits and like a flamethrower doing multiple pins to armor to also incorporate that into the howitzers just for balance I'm all about balance uh, whatever 
it takes uh, to make the game more enjoyable for beginner and expert players and use the tactics and not just a point system to kind of take the best value to get the best of both worlds. You know, if you want your cake, pay the points, take your cake. But uh, you shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to give you my cake too, uh, just because uh, I don't want to feel the heavy howitzer or a medium howitzer or multiple medium howitzers on several of my uh, weapon systems and then just pin you to death with that. So, speaking of double dipping, here's the other tactic that these savvy uh, 2D6 HE uh, wielders use is that if their item does take a couple pins, let's say they're unfortunate enough and they take a couple pins, they will switch that item to firing indirect. There's no penalty for indirect. You can't do that with anti-tank guns. You, so you get to you know, fire at will, and you take a couple pins, and you switch over to firing indirect, and you're hitting back on a six. So even if you had five pins on you, well, I mean, you have to pass your order check. Let's say so you have four pins or three pins, uh, you'd be needing a 7 to hit in some situations. You just switch to 6. So now you're firing 2d6 or 3d6 HE. Uh, and you get to ignore the fact that you have all those pins on you. And you're still putting your huge payload down range. Uh, like I said, that to me that's fine. Uh, they are versatile. and they. But we're going to look at the point ranges here. Light anti-tank gun, 50. Light howitzer, 50. Medium anti-tank, 75. Medium howitzer, 75. Heavy howitzer, 115. Heavy anti-tank gun, 110. So there's a five point difference uh, in those items and they're much more versatile when in uh, historically uh, they were a versatile weapon but not that much so. Uh, you know, you see, you could take two or one gun and uh or two guns you know like a, with a hat or even uh if you have multiple platoons you wouldn't need a, any heavy and a tank anything uh you could if you in, encounter a panther or, or a you know a huge uh tank of any kind you just hit it with two of those you put d6 pins on there multiple pins eight you know you get eight pins on there quick and it, you know they've got a 300 to 400 some point uh, vehicle that's no no longer a factor you didn't even penetrate it you know it, it, i guess the the biggest part when i discuss it with people is is the idea that uh the huge concussion blast uh disrupts the crew so it should stay the way it is and you know i totally disagree with that in that uh yeah of course it would getting a scoring a direct hit would be very difficult with a heavy howitzer so i mean i could imagine a lot of the round and the charge would be all over the place uh, additionally uh, tank crews savvy tank crews knew the difference between somebody turning a 75 millimeter howitzer on them and a 75 millimeter anti tank round zinging off your uh, canopy uh, i've never been a tank crewman so I would just imagine that the pucker factor would be quite a bit more from an anti-tank round as opposed to a howitzer. The other rule that I want to address is, you know, the, there's already rules in bolt action for multi-purpose guns. You know, the ZIS-3 division gun, the A-19 field gun, and even the light howitzer that shoots like a an anti-tank gun for the British. And I'm sure there's more. But there's already rules in the game that give like a medium howitzer you know shooting with a with a penalty at minus one uh when firing as anti-tank uh but it's still a it's a heavy gun you know it, it, the, the zis 3 division gun you know fires as a light howitzer but it's a medium anti-tank gun so why not do that if you're if you really got something where somebody's going to argue that a, you know se 122 or se 152 could knock out a tiger tank that's fine give it an a19 field gun stat and give him that ability but it's not that easy uh it's very difficult so anyway that's my topic for today comment uh put it on the board i'd love to talk to you about it thanks for listening